Welcome to another edition of Formula Drift Insider. As always, I am your host, Ryan Sage. On this week's episode, we chat with Chris Fordberg Racing to check out his new setup that produced his very first podium of the year at the last round in Palm Beach. And then we will dive into a full recap of PBIR, which was arguably the most exciting and certainly the most controversial event of the season. So let's begin by jumping right into the action from Palm Beach. You know, a lot of people were skeptical of whether or not the Florida market could keep pace with the other amazing rounds of FD. But with the original intended layout in place, more than 2,000 additional grandstands, and yet another packed house, Florida jumped right up there and proved that it has a well-deserved place in the FD schedule for years to come. However, it would be the competition that kept everyone on the edge of their seats. With judges focusing on creating the most exciting battles possible, drivers understood that proximity and duration of proximity would be the key for victory, especially in the latter rounds. But in the top 32, we already saw some craziness as Conrad Grunwald and Daigo Saito would put down two one more time battles. Daigo Saito had some incredible proximity in the chase runs against Conrad, but would completely shallow as he took a very low line on initiation on his lead runs and then consistently missed the first outer clipping zone. As the judges specified, the first half of the course would account for an estimated 70% of the score. So it was easy to see why the one more time battle took place. By the third battle, Daigo seemed to have figured it out and finally initiated higher with bigger angle as he filled the outer zone and then he moved on. In the round of 16, entry specialist Michael Essa would put too much into it and give number one qualifier Vaughn Gittin Jr. the easy win. Two other notable and impressive drivers were Chelsea Denofa and Odie Bacis. Odie would come out strong with a great lead initiation, but Chelsea made up for it with the proximity and then an outstanding lead run with crazy angle to take the win against the 2011 Rookie of the Year. Daijiro Yoshihara would be back on his game as he would battle a surging Robbie Nishida. Both drivers would have decent lead runs, but it was in the chase position that saw Dai take the advantage as he mirrored Robbie and kept on his rear bumper using proximity and the duration thereof as his tool to take out Nishida. A battle that came of some controversy was the Battle of the Brostangs, pitting Von Gittin Jr. and series leader Justin Pollock. JTP, who has never lost to Vaughn in his Mustang, seemed to have thrown the battle away as JTP straightened and seemed to stop drifting somewhere near the finish line. But almost as if it was written to happen, Vaughn gave Justin another chance as he made what the judges considered to be an equalizing mistake by losing drift in the most significant part of the course. JTP would not make a mistake again as he forced JR to spin on the one more time battle, and JTP was one step closer to a three-peat in 2012. This brings us to the battle that has garnered thousands of posts from Zip Tide to Rec Magazine to Drifting.com. I'm referring to Justin Pollock versus Daigo Saito in the final four. On his lead run, JTP seemed to face Daigo in a big way, putting him behind, but Daigo was able to catch up to JTP only near the end of the run but he shallowed his angle to do so. But it was on the second run where all the controversy started. Daigo initiated on the high line with tons of angle, which was a huge improvement over his run in 32 against Conrad. But to do so, he did it with a slight counter turn, almost fainting, which led him to drop close to nine miles per hour on the entry, compared to all but one of his other lead runs from top 32 down to this battle. JTP was expecting Daigo to come in at a faster entry speed, could not anticipate the adjustment, and almost hit Daigo on the transition and then spun out behind the Japanese driver. Cues from inside Justin's vehicle made it very clear that the Falcon driver was upset about what transpired on track, and that carried into pit lane as JTP approached Daigo and his team. We have exclusive footage of the events and what happened after the judges gave Daigo a win. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I saw it. Wide, 
Listen, he sold out on this side because he got hit earlier. So when he went out, he had no choice but to break to let it go out. Even so, Daigo took the win fairly in the eyes of the judges that night. And so then we saw Daigo in his very first final of the year against Chris Forsberg, also his first final of the year. Chris would have an excellent lead run against Saito, but Daigo was on him the entire time. It was incredible chase by Daigo. In the league, Daigo came out strong with a fast initiation on a good mid-high line with Forsberg right there. But as the driver shot to the outer zone, Forsberg approached Daigo too quickly and made contact with Daigo, losing proximity for a split second. Forsberg got right back on Daigo's rear bumper, but the mistake proved to be too much as the judges awarded Daigo Saito his first U.S. Formula Drift victory. And that, my friends, is a wrap for round number three at Palm Beach International Raceway. It should be noted that Formula Drift judges have taken out the judge aspect of the entry speed this year since their goal is to promote the vehicles entering the first turn together for better overall battles. In the past, when this wasn't the case, the judges noticed that some lead drivers would drag race into the first turn and this contributed to battles that suffered from lack of proximity. After this event, Judge Andy Yen said he would reconsider reinstituting the judge aspect of the initiation, which requires that lead drivers be within plus or minus five miles per hour of their respective qualifying speed. He says this should give the chase drivers enough data to know how a lead driver enters the course and the result being the best battles possible. You see, the idea is to see the battle, not for it to end shortly, because if the chase driver is always guessing the speed and how and where the lead driver will initiate on every battle, over time, this would create tentative chase drivers and the battles would suffer because of that. Now we move on to our second place finisher, Chris Forsberg, as he gives us some insight into his new vehicle setup. The car feels great. Um, Ray and Brian have done a fantastic job at putting uh, you know, the weight where it needs to be, giving a lot more adjustability in the suspension. Um, so yeah, we wanted to really play into you know, having control of side grip so we could really get hard on the brakes and keep the car hooked and going through the course. And they did an awesome job at that. I'm Brian from uh, MA Motorsports. I am one of uh, Chris Forsberg's new crew chiefs for 2012. We just built this 2012 Nissan 370Z. It uses a uh, VK56 Nissan V8, it's uh, heavily modified, uses individual throttle bodies. For this year, we changed a lot of the suspension and weight distribution. Um, the car's working a lot better now. It's got a lot more adjustability, a lot more grip. Uh, I feel like the car's gonna do very good this year. Um, at least as good as it did last year, it has a lot more, uh, a lot more adjustability in it. Um, it's got a lot more fabrication but not over the top unnecessary fabrication it's got work that it, that it needed you know we moved a lot of weight around um, to get the weight distribution better um, and again we added adjustability via you know, some speedway sway bars and uh, a few other odds and ends well that is it for this episode of formula drift insider but before we go it's shopfd.com and use the code insider for 20 percent of all your purchases for the next week and for a look at what's next, we go to professional hot chick, Vanessa Lansaw. Thanks, Ryan. On the next episode of Insider, we talk shop with Formula Drift technical manager, Kevin Wells, as we get his take on V8 versus turbos. Then we sit down with the ever talked about Daigo Saito for a Formula Drift Insider profile. As always, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And if you have any comments or questions, email us at insider at formulad.com. See you next time.